What's up guys, this is Zane from Inzane Comics and I'm back with another tutorial and this time we're going to be doing something that's been requested quite a bit of times and it's sound effects. The real word is onomatopoeia but we're just going to call it sound effects for the sake of simplicity. Anyways, so what we're going to be going over are sound effects and I created a template of different variations of sound effects that you'll possibly use and here they are. But we're going to go through each sound effect in separate videos to break it down a bit. All right, now without further ado, let's get right into it. So first of all, I'm going to create a new document. And I'm going to just use, I already have a template called comic book template, which is 7 inch by 10.5 inch, 300 PPI. You could do 400 PPI, it's up to you. But typically when you're printing, 300, 300 is enough. And this is where you can, if you guys haven't seen this before, I might as well explain this real quick. So this is where you can set up your width, your height, and you can do it based on inches, or you could do it based on pixels. I think whenever you start, you're going to see it based on pixels. I like to keep it in inches because this is what I know uh, my comic book's going to, the dimensions for my comic book are. And remember we talked about color mode. You can, you can start it off in CMYK. It's up to you. So let's just say we do a CMYK. No big deal. And leave everything else the same. Okay, create. All right, so I'm going to create a new folder. I mean, a new layer. And just call it Wham, because that's what we're doing. All right, and then we're going to go to this text tool. And we're going to type in, and let me zoom in a little bit just so I have. Another way, sorry, to move around on the page without going to these bars is you click on space and you can just, it gives you this hand button so you can move around like that. And then Alt and scroll to zoom in. Okay. Wham. All right. And let's make this size a little bit bigger so we can see it better. Okay, perfect. So that's our wham. All right, so there's a couple of things that we're going to do here. First of all, we're going to show you how to use the blending mode. So first of all, let's go to the layer and right click on it and hit blending options. All right, so this is going to be something that we're going to use quite a bit for these sound effects because essentially what we're doing is we're cre creating strokes and we're creating different kind of gradients and, and different variations. So this is how we're going to do it. So very first off, we're going to go here and we're going to click on stroke, all right? And the reason why it's looking funky is because the position right now is at inside at 43 pixels. So we can either increase that, which makes it all black, or we decrease it and it makes it like that. So we can decrease it as much as we want, right? But typically in these sound effects, I like to keep it at uh, center. And it really depends on what you're, what you're going for because what you do when, when you do it with center, it gives you relative sharp lines. Um, if you want to have round lines, you would do outside. So this is what outside looks like. Outside's not bad. Let's, let's just keep outside. And I'll have it at nine. All right. Then we can go through these variations, but I'm not going to talk about inner shadow just yet. I mean, you could. Let's, let, okay, let's see what it what happens. So you, here's what inner shadow looks like, right? And typically, I think you'll see as we make this white and we'll change this from multiply to normal and it creates this kind of a little bit of a 3D type effect. And if we increase opacity and now we can make it look like that. If you, you see that? It creates this very sharp look. And the way you do that sharp look is you decrease the size and make it to basically zero. And don't worry about the distance because you can literally grab your mouse and just drag it however way you want. So if you're doing something that requires that, you can go ahead and do that. Um, not for what I'm doing. I don't really need to use inner shadow. Inner glow is kind of, we're not gonna mess with that, but same thing. It, what this does is actually makes it around the border exactly around the border, whereas inner shadow doesn't do a border necessarily. It makes it basically a shadow. 
there's a difference between the two. And color overlay is, let's say you didn't originally like your color, so you can go to color overlay and you can change this to whatever color you want. And then you can increase or decrease the opacity of that color if you wanted to. Um, but I don't really use color overlay. Like I'll switch between color overlay and then change the color actually on the text. But uh, for, our, in, for our situation, we're not gonna use a color overlay. We're gonna use a gradient overlay. <clears throat> Now, over here on the very top in the blending mode, just keep it a normal. You can do a lot of cool things with these uh, different options, but I'm not going to recommend you to mess with that just now. Maybe later down with some of our other tutorials, I'm gonna tell you how to use those. All right, so now that we have this overlay, you can change the opacity and, and um, make it look like that or whatever, but you really want to keep it at 100% opacity and we're going to maneuver around our uh, gradient colors. So we come over here and in my experience there's three main colors you're going to use for gradients or for basically any kind of um, sound effect colors. It's You're going to stick with either orange, red, or yellow. It just seems to be pretty much the standard. If you're doing anything with liquid or water you might go blue um, but obviously this is not a rule of thumb. Use whatever color you feel like is right. Um, but this is just something I've just seen from my experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this color. And the, so the way you change the different gradient colors is you double click either here or here. If you click somewhere in the middle, you just created a new layer and that can create variations, um, variations to the gradient. But the way to get out of that is you click on it and you hit delete. So that's how you can delete these options. But anyways. All right. You can also change the opacity of each one of these. So let's say from here, sorry. So when you click on this black button right here, you can change the opacity and make it like that or even make it zero. And now it's the same color that you had originally in the foreground. Now that's opacity it becomes zero and the top becomes white. Um, but I'm just gonna show you how to you know, that's probably making it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. I'm just going to show you how to change the gradient from here. So you double click on this little gray button right here. And then you look for, you know, whatever color it is. So let's say it's orange. Okay. So now that we have this, it's basically saying, this is saying our gradient is going to go from orange to white. If you want to, like I mentioned, if you want to introduce a different color, you just double click on this. And then let's say you put purple, whatever you want to do, right? And then you can change this up however way you want, more or less. And now if you want to change its orientation, the color orientation, just click OK over here. And then you just move it up and down. Okay? That's how you do that. Sorry. And I'm just going to delete this because I don't want that. Oops. And we're going to make that orange. Okay. And that's probably pretty much where I want it. All right. So we have the gradient that we like. Now we're going to create this effect where it basically has the same text that just goes behind it. And the way we do that is we basically will go to drop shadow. And when we get to drop shadow, make this normal. Mine are all multiply. I don't know if that's how yours is going to look, but just bring it to normal. And opacity is going to be 100%. You can change the distance just to see it for now. Or you could have just moved it from here, whatever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the size to zero. Now it has a nice sharp effect, right? And what we're going to do here is we're going to change this. Click on here on, on the color and we'll pick, let's say, red. That looks good. And then we're going to create another drop shadow. And in this next drop shadow, we're going to give another one of these background layers. So if you notice how I made another drop shadows, I just clicked on this plus button. So now that we have that, we're going to make this black. 
and take off use global light because if you don't do that it create it does something funky with your other shadows if you have other shadows on your um, documents you just take that out all right and now we can freely move this as well so that's basically how you create these three different layers of shadows so this is basically all you do to get these effects in the blending mode now we go back to here and let's say you want to move everything around I just made a duplicate to make things easy and um, so one way I've taught you guys previously in the lettering tutorial you go here and you click on this little A which is the character button and then you can go and select each one of these and move them up or down that's wrong you move them up or down And what we can do is we can we can change the distance between each one of these letters. But anyways, so when you do that, um, it's going to create this. It's going to create uh, something like this, and then you have to go back and you have to click each one. And it's a little bit cumbersome and trying to maneuver each one up and down so let's say you want to freely move each letter the best way I can tell you to do that is first of all make sure this is the font that you like because otherwise you're gonna to have to rework everything so let's say this is the font you like you want to use this font but now you just want to move the letters around the way you'll do that is you go here on your font and right here in this space you right click and you do not convert to smart objects sorry you do convert to shape and it says could not complete your request because this type layer uses Fox bolt style so I didn't know that this was a error that would show up and I'm bringing this up so you guys are aware of it and not get worried about why it's not working basically what it's saying is hey we use stuff over here or sorry we use this bold right here and it doesn't like that it doesn't want to make it into a shape when that's selected so you just take it out and if you didn't have a bold selected, you wouldn't you wouldn't have got that error. All right, and then we just go here and convert to shape. Boom! So now it's converted to shape. Now, as you guys remember from the previous tutorial, you go over here to this black arrow and you move this around. Sorry, you have to click other outside and just select the specific word you want to move. And now you can just freely move it without all that kind of hassle you had to work, deal with before. So that's basically how you do it. And by the way, let's say you want to make this bigger. You could do that. Or if you want to get very creative and even change the font a little bit, you can do that as well. You know? So there's some cool things you can do with, with these sound effects. But yep, this is pretty simple, short, you know, sweet. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Please subscribe to my YouTube account. I'll be going over these other fonts. Next, we're going to be talking about this font, which is really cool because this is the kind of font that usually you'll see. It's clear, and um, you'll see it this way, or you're going to see that with white. So we're going to talk about that next. All right, see you guys on my next tutorial. Thank you for watching.